Welcome back to Hedge Apple Acres. In today's video, we're going to talk about our livestock guardian dogs and fencing. Hope you stay tuned. A few videos back, we talked about what to do with our livestock guardian dogs, specifically Roxy. She's discovered the neighbors and likes to visit. And that does not work for us. So currently, I have a run or a clothesline fixed up that she is tied to. I don't like it, but I needed her to stay home until I got something else fixed. I'm working on electric fence, but I'm not confident that will keep her in because I know she's going through the sheep pens some and I don't want to put electric fence through there. Also, you saw in an earlier video, I put a log or two around the fence. I've since gone back and put panels that I cut down um, below that fence so nothing can get out there. Because in addition to Roxy, my two goats that we discussed in a previous video were getting out there. They are now staying in. So I still want to do the electric fence, but I needed something that would work a little bit better. I was, especially around the pens, or the sheep handling facilities. So I decided to get a in-ground fence system for her. So I settled on the sports dog brand, 100 acre. So it can go up to 100 acres. Now what I have for her, and the sheep, they stay, They have five acres or four and a half acres close to the house that I keep them in often. So that's where I want this around first. So I got flags to go around the fence. To be honest, I will probably not use these because I'm gonna put it right on the fence line. Charger, a collar, more flags, some transformer, and two spools of wire for a total of a thousand feet. Um, I went to Google and I measured how much fence I needed, and I needed 2,000 feet. So I got some more wire to go with it. Um, it is all 20 gauge, so we'll see how that goes. My plan is not to put it on the in ground. I'm just going to put it along the bottom of the fence. I think the grass will grow up and it won't matter. I also thought about putting it in like an insulator on the fence, but I don't think I need to. It's along the bottom, grass will grow up. We don't mow there, it's not going to be a problem. It also gives me some flexibility in that if I need to move it or I have some damage done to it, it's easier to get to for me to fix. I have the wire hooked up and the fence transmitter plugged in and on. When I first turned it on, it didn't give me the light for a loop, so I went out and checked my connections. I have three of them in about a 2100 foot perimeter run. I purchased 2,000 feet of wire, so of course it went slightly over. So I'd run town by a little bit more wire to get it connected. Since the light didn't come on for a loop, I went and double checked all my connections. They were all good, so I went back in, and there's a, a distance toggle switch, so I flipped it from low to high, which it says in the manual, you only need to do that if you have 4,000 feet or more perimeter. I'm right at, I'm just barely over 2,000, but when I flipped it to high, the loop button came on, so it's working. I am running 20 gauge wire, so that can make a difference. Also, 
I set the range of the signal fairly wide. I can set it for a range from 0 to 10. I put it on a 9. That way it gives my dogs plenty of warning. We're getting ready to try it and see what it does. I've got the I've got the controller and I have a light for it. So, let's see. Can you hear it? It's going off. It's back up from the fence. Still going off. Still going off. Okay, I'm about 12 foot from the fence and it's not going off right now. Let's listen as we get closer. I'm about eight feet. So I'm gonna turn that distance down because as I go through the barn, I've got the wire on the side of the barn and it's dinging out in the middle. So I don't want that for the dogs. One other thing, I can set the fence to just vibrate and make a beep, or I can make it, set it to beep, vibrate, and stimulate, or just stimulation by itself. I don't really understand the last one, but so I turned it on to beep, vibrate, and stimulate. So, not really wanting to do this, but if I'm gonna put it on my dog, I might as well find out. So, I have my fingers on it, and I'm gonna see how it goes. It's beeping at me. Beep, beep, oh, that hurt. <laughs> I don't like that. Okay, now what's that comparable to? I have electric fence for my goats and I try to run it about six to 8,000 volts. When I touch that, it causes my elbow to tingle. I don't like it, so I avoid it at all costs, but it hurts. Or, I mean, whenever I touch it, oh, my elbow tingles. This is not that bad, but it is more than I thought it would be. I don't know how much video I got there because Hink came over and I guess he licked the camera. It fell down. And then Roxy and I tried to fence a few times. It was really difficult in this wind for me to hear the beeping. So as soon as I thought she should be getting it, we, we took off away from the fence. We'll see how that goes. Um, also, Roxy thought my windscreen was some kind of animal to eat. But I got it from her before too soon. So I'm excited to find out. I'm excited to see how this works. I know it's not something for everyone. But for me, I, tying her up is not an option. I've had to do it for a few days. It kills me and it keeps her from doing what she's supposed to. The fence or the in-ground fence will allow her to do her job while maintaining that freedom. I was surprised by the shock or the stimulation. It was a touch stronger than I figured, but it wasn't as strong as the electric fence when it's hitting good. And I know it has to be hitting good for her to respect it. So we'll see how this goes. As always, we appreciate you watching and we encourage you to like, comment, subscribe, and share. We'll be seeing you more.